Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to more Miraculous. Yeah, it's been a few weeks here since we've uh, reacted to any of this. Um, and it's by no means, no means, like, disinterest in the series or that I'm kind of growing bored of it and it's formulaic nature again. I'm actually not, surprisingly enough. Um, this time it's been more due to just wanting to focus on other stuff as well as just other stuff in my life has been going on. And I've just been not able to get to this show. Um, as well as uh, She-Ra, actually. I've just not been able to get to it because I've been focusing on the other shows and other videos and whatnot. But I wanted to make sure I got to that. I got to this this week. So, yeah, here we are. Um, like with some other stuff I've reacted to, we're just going to kind of take it as it goes. Uh, it'll probably end up being two episodes we react to today. Um, you'll already know based on the t title of the video, but still. Um, yeah. So, th there's not much to talk about on where we left off, because, um, it is so formulaic. There's not, like, there, there is this ongoing kind of narrative kind of playing in the background that's been teased a little bit, but we're not going to get it for most of these episodes. So, I, I really don't expect anything big to be happening right now. Um... Last time was, uh, I believe last time was the Simon Says one, right? Um, I might be wrong about that, but I think it was. Um, and I, I don't really know what's coming up this time. Um, but I'm interested. I, I am definitely interested. Uh, I talked about it before in the past reactions and all, but I, I, just real quick, um, partially to buffer out this, these pre-thoughts, <laughs> admittedly. I, I do want to talk again about just how much of a surprise this show has ended up being. Because, remember, I, I tried reacting to this in the past, and I ended up dropping it. Because I thought it was just a little too formulaic, and in the end I felt it wasn't really going anywhere. So, um, yeah, I was worried that it wouldn't really be worth it to keep going but i decided to give certain shows a second chance um and this was one of them and especially because um smurf vlogs chose it as a donation reward so yeah i decided to get, give it a second chance see what happens and if i just still don't end up liking it then i don't end up liking it um but that it seems like I dropped it like right at the wrong time because it started getting much better. Not only the quality of the well formulaic episodes got better, the very episodic nature of it uh, stopped being as much of a hindrance. Um, but it actually started integrating that ongoing narrative that I was wanting. <laughs> so it. It fixed its problems shortly after I ended up dropping it the first time, ironically enough. Um, but doesn't that isn't that always how it is, how it is? Um, and, and that's not going to be the case for everything I react to, of course. Like everything I react to and drop, it's not it's like it's going to automatically always get better and stay better. Um, Dofus got a little better after that point, but then started going downhill for me again. Um, I know Mystery Inc. doesn't go anywhere either. Um, at least nowhere I would want it to, and it doesn't fix its major problems, um, with its characterizations of the main cast. Um, let's put it that way. Um, and, and so many others, like... Not everything is going to be fixed this way. So it's like, I'm glad that this one did end up getting better. And that I was able to give it a second chance. Um, 
either way, either way. I'm interested to see where it goes and to see uh, what we get from the main story going forward. Um, because that will be uh, just kind of sprinkled along, sprinkled in along the ride. And hopefully we'll get more big episodes once we get to season two. Um, as with most of the multi-season shows I react to, though, um, I will be taking a break between seasons one and two. As I've said in the past, it's just how I do things, just to be able to, like, mix things up on the channel enough so it's not always the exact same thing for too long. I know a lot of reactors will just go through the entire thing all in one go, but it's like, I will face severe burnout if I do that. It, it just, it, it, it will make me very apathetic and jaded towards the series. If I tried to do that, even if it's I, even if it's otherwise enjoyable, I would just I, I I would possibly drop the series if I try to do that. In fact, I say it's probable, just because of how not bored, but I don't know another way to put it. Bored isn't quite the right word though. And neither would be disinterested, but just how over it I'd be at that point. I need to have a break in order to kind of refresh my mind on it. Um, it's basically just like how it would go if I were watching it, like when it was coming out and stuff. It'd be like, oh, you're, it, there's going to be breaks each week between episodes. And on top of that, between seasons, there's probably going to be quite a few months of a break at least. So it's like, yeah, it, it, it kind of, that's the kind of format shows should be in. That's why I don't like shows that are just released all in one go, like on Netflix and whatnot. And people are like, oh, it's, it's for binging and stuff. It's like, yeah, but binging takes away a lot of the uh, quality of viewing. Ah, excuse me. Ah, as I was saying. It takes away a lot of the quality of viewing, in my opinion, because part of the quality of watching a show is the weight, because it builds up that interest, it builds up that tension, it builds up just everything that you want for the series in an important way that you just don't get when you have... Uh, when you binge it. When you binge a show, cliffhangers mean absolutely nothing, which is extremely sad because cliffhangers are one of the greatest tools a show can utilize. It, it, it just, it, it, it has the ability to get people invested in a show 10 times easier and, and 10 times stronger than if, they, than if there weren't cliffhangers. Easily. Because it it makes you coming, keep coming back. It, it makes you want to see what's going to happen next. And the weight is necessary to cliffhangers. Other Because if, if you don't have that weight in between, the cliffhanger has no pull. It has no draw. It has no, you know, weight to it. It's, you're, it's not a cliffhanger because you're going to see what's going to happen right away. So it's like, yeah, I don't like the binging model. Uh, and I, I've binged shows. It's rare, but I have binged shows. And for the most part, the only shows that it actually is okay to binge, the only shows that it actually works with, are either shows that are just so engrossing that you just can't stop watching, and don't rely on cliffhangers necessarily, or just don't rely on their narrative requiring that breath between, or shows that are specifically made to be binged, that in terms of how they're written, paced, and just shown, how they're directed and everything, all of that, 
that they're specifically made that way to be binged. Those are the only kinds of shows where I find it like, okay. And like, like for example, game shows on Netflix. When I'm watching game shows on Netflix, it's like, yeah, you can binge a game show. Yeah. But like when I'm watching something like Stranger Things, it's like, I don't want to binge this. This show works so much better if you have that time between each episode. If you wait. Because I, I binged one of the seasons for this channel, actually. I, I think it was the old channel, the old account, but still. Um, it was a Halloween special. I, I binged, I believe it was all of season two. Yeah, it, it was season two. And it, 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 it's one of the things that ruined season two for me. Season two was definitely just not as good. <laughs> But binging it also just hurt it much, that much more. It, it just destroyed my enjoyment of it. But either way, either way, I've talked on long enough about other stuff. The point is that I want to take breaks in between seasons to kind of refresh my mind on these shows. So it doesn't get old to me. Plus, when I get back into it, I'll ha I'll be... I'll feel fresh, I'll feel renewed, I'll feel excited for it again. Um, so once we get to the end of season one of Miraculous, we will be taking a break to move on to other donation reward reactions for this slot. Uh, we will get to Miraculous down the line, uh, more Miraculous down the line. But yeah, that that's the plan. Um... <laughs> That being said, as I said, I don't know what these episodes have in store for us. I don't even know uh, how many episodes this uh, season is all in all. I could check that real quick. 26. Pretty standard. So we are in the second half, and we are definitely reaching the end. Um, but we still got a bit to go. So yeah. Either way, we're going to get this started and hope for the best with the with uh, these episodes today. Again, like most likely we're just going to do two because when we do that, when we do it like, oh, we're just going to watch and see where it goes, it mostly ends up being two. Um, but if we end up doing more, we end up doing more. Um, I, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, either way, let's get this going. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts, and will contain spoilers to the episode. Uh, or episodes, rather. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so um, I looked up the voice actor for Bob Roth, the uh, the guy who was uh, the record company guy. Um, <laughs> and he's been in quite a few things. Like I, I've never heard of the act, the voice actor's name, Grant George. I, I, I don't know the name, but he's been in quite a few things that um, I know. Um, even if I don't know the character offhand. Like, he's a character named Izuru Kira from Bleach. Um, he's Sugetsu Hazuki from Naruto and Boruto. I, I know who Sugetsu is. He was a member of Hawk with Sasuke. I think it's called Hawk, right? I don't know. I never actually got too far into Shippuden. Um, all, most of what I know is just, like, from what I've heard and everything. Um, he's Rokujo in Durara X2. Um, he's Lancer in Phase Zero. Like, I, I'm not a fan of Phase Zero, but I know who Lancer is. He was, like, I think one of the only characters I liked. Um, but he's also Keiichi Meibara in Higurashi. So that that's fun. He's Steely Dan in uh, JoJo Stardust Crusaders. Um, he's Detective Patella in Monster. Uh, da, 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 da. He's a few characters in the Viz dub of... Uh, Sailor Moon. Looks like he's in Kill la Kill as well. Though, I mean, that doesn't help because I don't know uh, characters for that, really, because I didn't see that much of it before I dropped it. 
Um, he's also done other stuff according to this. Like, I guess he was in, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy series as Ant-Man. Actually, he's been, he's been, he plays Ant-Man in quite a few things. Yeah. He's also in video games. You've seen video. I know this is taking up a lot of time. I'll talk about the episodes just a second here. I'm just kind of curious now. He, oh, he's Keelik in the Soul Calibur games? Okay. I, I know that one for sure. I, none of these are what I like, thought I recognized the voice for, though. I don't know. It's like... He, he's been in many things I know, and I, 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 like, know the voice for, but it's like, nothing like that I would recognize that voice from. Okay, I know who Izuru Kira is, okay. He's just kind of a, kind of a character who never really had a big impact on me. He, he was, uh, Gin Ichimaru's lieutenant in the... In the Soul Society. Anyway, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about these episodes. This was, in a way, a two-parter. Because um, the episodes directly connected to each other, but the second episode didn't really mention the events of the first one at all. Which is interesting. Um, but they were back-to-back -back episodes, and both centered around this rocker, Jagged Stone. Obviously, a reference to Mick Jagger um, of the Rolling Stones. It's like, come on, that's super obvious. <laughs> uh, so Jagged Stone is this um, classic rocker who's who sees himself as kind of God's gift to music. He's very arrogant. He's very uh, he's very conceited, and, and he looks down on other kinds of music. And the thing is, like, I love rock music more than any other genre, especially classic rock. Um, this guy seems like he's more like, th this guy doesn't seem like fully classic rock. Uh, he seems more like he's a hard rock type of uh, musician, but still. Um, this is definitely my favorite genre, but at the same time, I acknowledge that other genres have worth too, even if I personally don't like the music. Um, Mr. XY, who is kind of touted as his rival in the second episode here, um, he, he kind of has this modern electronic pop sound to him, where it's like, it, it's, it's not dubstep or anything like that. It, it's like, it, it's all done electronically. Um, he mentions, he basically mentions that computers like create the music for him and everything and how it's like kind of like this music of the present of the future and all that while uh other stuff like rock and roll is like the past um and, and it's very clear mr xy kind of has the same problems as jagged stone they both look down on other forms of music and are very conceited regarding themselves and their own talents um Rather than, and even by the end, they, need, they don't really come to this agreement that there's, like, value in all kinds of different genres. They just kind of leave with their same thoughts. <laughs> um, and, and it's, we, we see in these episodes that Jagged does try to appreciate some people, and that he actively tries to at least try to be nice at times, like with the principal of the school. Um, but he's definitely not afraid to be himself either and, and to share what he really thinks most of the time. Um, Jagged is definitely very much a stereotype, but like most of the characters, let's be honest, in this show. Uh, he, he's a walking rock star stereotype. He, he's... If this wasn't a show aimed at children, you know he would be like the kind who he'd he'd be the uh the drugs and alcohol and party uh animal um type rock star who would just be like getting into trouble all the time constantly. But 
they had to tone it down because it is a show aimed at younger audiences. Um, but he's very much still that same kind of guy. He, again, he's very arrogant. He's very wild. He's very, um, uh, he, he has this very narrow view of music. He, he has a fucking crocodile for a pet. It's like, if, if you're going to be, if you're going to kind of make fun of generic ass, uh, um, super, uh, what's the crap? My mind blank there. Generic ass, uh, super over the top, uh, rock star stereotypes. Get him a wild pet like that. Um, and a crocodile, I think, really fits. Um, so the first episode here mostly focuses not on Jagged as the akumatized villain, but as the instigator. Because see that that seems to be a that that's kind of the recurring thing with this series. There's always the person who gets akumatized and the instigator who causes them to be subject to akumatization, um, or evilization or whatever you want to call it. Um, the instigator not always is a bad person or anything, but somehow instigates uh, a situation and causes the person to be akumatized to become vulnerable to it, to become, um, to be put into that specific state of being to where they're subject to being akumatized. Um, you know what I mean. I can't word. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and so Jagged Stone in the first episode here is definitely the instigator. He's the one who's kind of treating his self-proclaimed number one fan like shit and and to be fair based on what we were told of this number one fan he is a stalker to some pretty extreme degrees even to the point of stalking jagged's mother like that's not okay stalking is never okay but especially when you start to stalk uh the person's family like it, it's just this invasion of privacy that is extremely problematic. And so it's like, I, I can kind of understand why Jagged was so upset by this. I can understand him getting angry and everything with this number one fan. I, I get it. Because his privacy was being invaded. His mother's privacy was being invaded. It's like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. I mean, stalking always is. Stalking is never positive. It, 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 it's, there's a reason why stalk, the word stalking is seen as inherently negative. Um, yeah, it's just... It's creepy as fuck, if nothing else. So, yeah, he becomes Pixelator, I think he said it was. Um, and he has the ability to pixelate and trap anyone he takes a picture of um it's an interesting idea especially to me as an amateur photographer and videographer um the idea of like a photo a photograph based villain and everything um and, and i see what they were going for but i feel like it wasn't like super interesting or creative and a lot of the episode, the fact that he kept saying the same thing, like look into the lens every time he uh, tried to take a picture of someone or did take a picture of someone and trap them and everything. It's like, it, it got a little annoying at times, just him saying the same thing over and over. Like you very much could have diversified his uh, his lines a little better, I feel. Um, but in the second episode, um, we get jagged as the akumatized person this time the instigator is mr xy jagged's uh kind of musical rival they're going back and forth at the top of the charts and jagged is upset that mr xy who he seems who he sees as just being soulless basically in terms of his music which i can agree to some uh, extent that a lot of musicians nowadays in real life kind of have that feel to them. They just feel like uh, soulless copies of each other, basically. Um, but that's kind of what he views them as. And 
the fact that he's number one doesn't seem to bother Jagged so much. It's more the idea of working with him as well as the added uh, pressure from the record company boss who's telling him, like, no, 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 you need to, you need to focus on your branding connecting to the current audience rather than what you want, rather than having your own style and your own creativity. All of this kind of just puts him in that vulnerable, upset state and makes him easily akumatized by Hawkmoth. So he becomes guitar villain, who is just, it's just not a good name. It is such a bland name. Like, hell, I would have taken something like Rock and Roller over that. Or or just Rockstar in general would have worked fine. But Guitar Villain just sounds so bland. Like, And it, and it doesn't sound bland as in, like, uh, just un, un, it lacking creativity and unoriginal and everything and just boring. It sounds like, perp like they purposefully made it bland. And I just, I don't get it. It doesn't serve his character to be called Guitar Villain. It, and it's, it's just, it's boring. It's uninteresting. It's not well thought out. There's so many better names they could have gone with. And it, he kind of has the same problem as in the uh, episode before this. Because like with Pixelator, he basically just shouts the same lines over and over again as his uh, moves, basically. It's very Pokemon-like. <laughs> uh, he just, like, shouts out, like, guitar solo or ultimate solo or whatever. And it's just like, okay, we get it. You're a rock star. And it just it gets old really quickly. It, it, I don't feel it's necessary. I don't feel like, like this isn't a, a shonen battle anime. He doesn't need to shout out his moves. Um, I just feel like it's it's unnecessary. It's not it. There's no reason for it, and it it, it just makes it a little annoying. Um, the actual powers of these two villains, though, um, Pixelator's powers, pretty interesting. I, I've seen this kind of thing done before. I think Miraculous itself even did it before. Um, just this. A similar kind of thing, at least. Um, but the guitar villains' powers, with um, they they kind of seemed a little inconsistent, but they were interesting, at least. Like play the music, like these beams shoot out of the guitar, and they either can make people dance, they can destroy stuff, they can create so si sonic waves, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, they're just it didn't seem like consistent in like what they did at any given time. I don't know, it just felt like there, it could have been a little more clear cut, maybe. Excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, the episodes were enjoyable enough, I guess, but they were definitely not as strong as some episodes we've had. Um, I, I just feel like it, they could have been done a little better, maybe fine-tuned a little more. <laughs> I guess that's a pun, a, a, a guitar pun. <laughs> They could have been fine-tuned a little better, um, just given a little more thought put into them on how to do certain things. Uh, the designs were fine, like the designs for Pixelator and um, and uh, Guitar Villain, as well as their normal, regular human forms. Those were fine. I have no issues with those, um, especially Guitar Villain. Like the Guitar Villain design is fantastic. Um, even if it's very him and the, his normal Jagged Stone uh, appearance, they're very stereotypical rock star. Like, let's be honest. Um, but I have no issue with them at all. They're, they're fine. They're good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, sure. <laughs> I don't know what to say there. Um, but yeah, it's like, that was definitely more of a highlight of these episodes, and, which is almost disappointing. Um, and, and the way that they were defeated was all well and good, but it's like, the little issues it did have kind of just 
stacked up and felt like it hurt the overall enjoyment of these episodes. Um, it is interesting, though. I, I still do say it's interesting that they did do it this way, that we had basically what amounts to as a two-parter, but also not, because they didn't directly reference each other or build into each other. Really, the only thing that makes it kind of a semi-two-parter is the fact that Jagged Stone is a major character in both episodes, and that it kind of centers around that aspect of things. Um. And kind of the last thing I want to talk about, I, I mentioned it during the reaction, but I want to talk about it here as well, is the gopher thing. I really find it just fun that they brought that in. I mean, they're doing this uh, field trip, like this work study field trip, which again, I've never heard of that being done in American high schools or whatnot, or middle schools or whatever, I don't know. Um, but middle schools, high schools, I've never heard of that being done. Like, yeah, we've gone on field trips all the time, sure. Um, but never a work-study one where we were like, oh, you get to actually do stuff, try it out, see what it's like to do this. No. The closest I've ever done to anything like that is classes. Like, actual classes where we've done, like, where we've done stuff that kind of relates to, like, what the classes are about. Like, Okay, let's put let's give an example. I when I was in high school, I took culinary classes because I was always big into the culinary arts. And although I didn't end up pursuing that as a career or anything, I still really value those classes and had a great time. And I still look favorably upon the culinary arts to this day. Um, but in culinary arts classes, like obviously, we would not just study; we would actually make stuff. We would cook. We would uh, make all kinds of different stuff. We would make cakes. We would make uh, Monte Cristo sandwiches. That is the one thing I remember very vividly about one of my uh, culinary classes. We made Monte Cristo sandwiches. It was the first time I'd ever heard of it, and it just stuck with me. It's it's basically it's it's a uh, ham and cheese. It's actually ham and turkey and uh, cheese in a sandwich. And then deep fried. It's so ridiculous, but really good. <laughs> um, it's it's so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I remember we made that in culinary class, and it's like I that's kind of the only thing close to this that I've ever experienced. Like we never went on like these work study field trips. That was never a thing. Like, we weren't even, like, it wasn't even that I just didn't. It's, like, we were never even given the options to. And I'd been to multiple different high schools because of my family moving around a lot. So it's, like, I, I had never heard of that in any of them. I would never heard of anyone else even doing it to either, not just not me. <laughs> so it's, like, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's more of a thing in other countries. Um, but, yeah, so... Marinette is given the job of a gopher, and I do know what this is because of conventions. Uh, so as I said in the reaction, a gopher, and as they said in the episode, a gopher is someone who just kind of floats around and does whatever is needed at the time. They don't really have a specific job. They just, they do what is needed. They're basically, um, they're basically an everyman kind of staff. They're, they, they do, they, they'll go around, it, like, as I mentioned in the reaction, uh, they have them at conventions. Um, and they'll go around and it's like, okay, so let's say this staff member who's uh, working live events, you know, sitting at the door checking people's badges. Let's say uh, they need a drink. They need someone to get them a drink while they're on shift. That's what a gopher would do. A gopher finds out, they would go uh, run to get a drink from the staff break room and bring it back to them. Let's say that uh, um, the staff in the um, live events room needs something run, run to another group of another staff grouping. Like maybe they have like some information on something they need to get to. Um, let's just say security staff, for example. So they need something run over. So a gopher would do that. Someone who's not needed in any very specific role and just has open availability. 
Um, that is what a gopher is for. And I, I just really find it interesting that they brought this into this because I'll be honest, I never hear gophers talked about in, in work-related situations in any show or movie or whatnot. I just never hear them talk about, talked about. And it's not talked about as in any negative way necessarily either. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's part of it. Uh, granted, they don't, of course, mention how integral gophers are, but still, they, they don't, like, downplay it either, necessarily. Um, and I kind of appreciate that. Um, and again, I, I'm not a gopher when I work in conventions. I do live events. I'm the one who sits at the doors and uh, checks badges and stuff, um, which is fine. I love doing that, but it's like, yeah, I, I, I've still known gophers i've worked with gophers i've asked them to go get stuff and do stuff and everything um yeah i've had to deal with that and i just think it's like it's a very underrated position and yeah it's just i guess i, I never hear about it mentioned in pretty much any other context so it's like i didn't even think about it being in other jobs and industries and stuff but thinking about it, it probably would be yeah <laughs> Um, I, so I, I know it's, it seems like such a small thing, but I just kind of appreciate that they put that in there, uh, just from a personal uh, level, just knowing what it is and uh, having experience like working with gophers and all. So I, I, I just think that's interesting. I always wondered, by the way, where did why are they called gophers? Like, where did they get the name from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I know what a gopher is in terms of the animal. Still, it's like, what does that have to do with what gophers at these kind of jobs and all do? I don't know. I don't know much about gophers as the animal and all. Um, but yeah, either way, enough rambling from me. Um, tell me in the comments below what you thought of these two episodes of Miraculous. And hopefully it won't be as long until we get to more um, next time. In the meantime, thank you all so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.